Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. In this video, we will be solving a really interesting problem from Lead Code. And name of the problem is Maximum Number of Achievable Transfer Request. So we have n buildings numbered from 0 to n minus 1. Each building has a number of employees. It's a transfer season and some employees wants to change the building they reside in. Now you are given an array request where request i is from i to i represents an employee's request to transfer from the building from i to the building to i so from i and to i are the building numbers an employee wants to transfer from the building from i to the building to i all buildings are full so a list of requests is achievable if for each building the net change in the employee transfer is zero this means the number of employees leaving is equal to number of employees moving in for example if n is equal to 3 that means there are building starting from the number 0 to 2 and two employees are leaving from the building 0 one employee is leaving from the building 1 and one employee is leaving from the building 2 there should be two employees who are moving to the building 0 one employee moving to the building 1 and one employee moving to the building 2 so as to neutralize it and we have to return the maximum number of achievable request so let's quickly see an example and then we will come to it here we have in total five buildings starting from the building number 0 till the building number 4. Now for the building number 1 we can see that the number of employees who wants to enter the building are X and Y. Yeah, so two employees wants to enter the building number 1 and then there are two employees A and B who wants to leave the building number 1. So plus 2 and minus 2. For the building number 2, there is one employee, employee A, who wants to enter, so plus 1, and one employee, that is employee Z, who wants to leave this building, so for this, minus 1. Now, for the building 0, there are two employees who wants to enter and two employees who wants to leave, so again, plus 2 and minus 2. So, for all these buildings, we are having the summation of the employees who wants to enter and who wants to leave is equal to zero. So the net change in the total number of employees in these buildings is zero. For the building three and four we can see that here the change is of minus one and here the change is of plus one because one employee wants to enter the building four and one employee is leaving the building number three. So from the list of requests, uh, how many requests do we have? So this is one request, request number one, this is request number two, three, four, five, and six in total we are having six requests out of which these five requests over here they are acceptable and the request this this is not acceptable because this is causing an imbalance in the number of employees in these buildings so in total five requests can be accepted or these five requests can be achieved now again looking at the constraints of the problem here we have the number of requests is equal to 16 at max so as the constraints are really low we can think of a brute force solution. So for example, if we have uh, two requests here, request number one and the request number two, what we can do is we can select the request number one, we can select the request number two, or we can select the request number one as well as request number two. Also there is an option to select none of the request. So there is an empty set. So in total we will be having two raised to the power two number of subsets. Similarly, if the number of requests are 3, that is request number 1, 2, and 3, what we can do is, we can try selecting the request number 1 alone, then the request number 2 alone, and request number 3 alone, then 1 with 2, 1 with 3, 2 with 3, then 1, 2, and 3 together and then there's an empty set which denotes that we are not taking any request so in total we will be having eight subset and this is 2 raised to the power 3 so in the worst case we are going to have 2 raised to the power 16 which will be accepted so that is why we can brute force this solution for each request we will be having two choices either to select this request in our final configuration or the final collection of request or to not to select this one so let us quickly go to the coding section and we can actually see that how we can do this. We are, we are going to do this with the help of recursion. So 
we are creating a function help in this function I'm keeping a pointer i which denotes the request we are currently on and we will be keeping the vector request with us alright so the base case is if i is equal to v dot size that means we already exhausted the request array so in this case we have no option but to return otherwise we will be having two options either to select this request or to not select this request now we will see what all are the operations that we will have to do when we are selecting this and what all are the operations that we have to do when we are not selecting this so as I told you that that if we ignore this request then the total number of employees coming to a building and total number of employees which are moving out of the building are zero for each of the building we just have to ignore this request so we can maintain a vector of size which is equal to the number of buildings so this is 0 1 2 3 and 4 now for each building let us say we are selecting the request number 1 if we are selecting this request number 1 so what we are going to do is we are going to increment the number of employees in the building 2 so we are going to add plus 1 here and we are going to remove one employee from the building 1 so minus 1 over here then we are selecting the request number 2 so in request number 2 one employee is going from building number 2 to building number 0 so plus 1 at 0 and minus 1 at 2 then we have the request number 3 so in the request number 3 one employee is moving from the building number 0 to 1 so plus 1 in this and minus 1 in this if we are selecting the request number 4 then one employee is moving from 0 to 1 again so again minus 1 and plus 1 finally in the fifth one one employee is moving from the building number 1 to 0 so plus 1 here and minus 1 here so if we see the net change is 0 at this position 0 at this position 0 at this position this is already 0 and this is already 0 and we ignored the request number 6 so this way we are going to ignore each request one by one that means we are going to generate all the possible subsets of a request that we can and we will see for each of the subset that if the final vector which stores the number of intake in the building is equal to 0 or not and if it is 0 then this is one of the possible answer so we can maximize the answer now let us actually see that how we can code this this i is the current request that we are working on v is the request vector then we have int l which denotes the how many requests that we have already taken into account these are the number of requests that we have selected all right and we have to keep a vector which will denote that how many employees are moving in and how many employees are moving out so that will be a vector of type int and let us name it as temp all right now when we reach the end now this is the time to check the temp that if any entry in the temp is non-zero in that case we will be knowing that this subset of request is not good so let us go to each of the entry of this temp and if it is not equal to zero if a is not equal to zero then in this case we are going to return alright let us create it a void function and if all the values are zero then in that case our answer is equal to maximum of answer comma L where L denotes the number of requests that we have already taken into account and then return otherwise we will have two options one option will be to select this request and one option will be to ignore this let us first ignore this request so when we are ignoring this request we don't have to do anything we just have to move to the next request and we have to call the helper function with i plus 1 and v l and temp done now we will try to go and select this request now when we are selecting this request we have to make certain changes the first change will be in the vector temp so in the vector temp we have to decrement at the position from the building the employee is moving out and we have to increment at the position of the building in which an employee is moving in so temp of 
v of i this is the current request v of i is the current request and v of i 0 represents from so at this position we have to do minus minus and v of i 1 this is 2 so we have to do a plus plus here because employee is moving at this position now after that we can call the helper function with i plus 1 move on to the next request with v with l plus 1 this time because we are incrementing we are actually taking this request into account and temp finally after coming back we have to undo the changes that we have done so we have to undo this change that v of i 0 plus plus and temp of v of i 1 minus minus also we can take them as reference yes we have already taken it as reference and finally we will return out of it now we are going to call this function from our main function and for that we will create a vector of int temp which will be equal to same as the number of buildings available and initialize it with 0 now call this function help and pass i as 0 and then request and l as 0 then temp and then finally return answer now answer we can take a global variable but you can also pass it as a reference in the helper function so let me for the sake of simplicity take it as a global variable answer is equal to 0 and return answer let us try to run this hmm, it is giving us correct answer let us try to submit and it got accepted now we have already discussed the time complexity of the solution it is going to be 2 raised to the power 16 in the worst case the extra space that we are using here is of size n which is given as 20 so it is almost constant so it is basically an exponential time solution but the constraints are so low that it is passing the constraints and the space is a constant space so this is it for this question if you like the video please subscribe to the channel and please share it with your friends to watch regular videos on data structures and algorithm please subscribe to the channel and please hit the bell icon so that you can get notification to our latest videos thank you